the square sides of each of those pieces um, for the spar caps, aileron spar caps, is 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm just cutting a bunch of material, 3 eighths of an inch, and then we'll put the angles on them. Well, I decided to uh, um, go ahead and fast forward, but yet show all of my work, just so you get an, a picture of how much work is going into it. Um, and uh, the other thing, I, I'm going to show you a couple little tips, you know, just for the, like I said, this is for people who haven't done much work like this. You know, these thin little pieces, when you're running these through the saw, there's a tendency for it to want to chip and chatter and, and kick. And I don't know, let me rotate this towards me a little bit more. There we go. See, so you can see. What I'm doing back here, whenever I'm starting this in, I'm holding it down and against the fence, but on the back side, I'm lifting and pulling back this way to kind of force it onto the table and against the fence, at least when I start it and get it about halfway through until then. If you don't, well, I'll show you real quick what happens. Now, I kind of exaggerated that a little bit, but you can see that it chips it and jerks it and, and and wants to kick it back at you. The other thing is I never stand directly behind this. My face, my head, uh, the only thing that is directly in line is my hands from my wrists down. Nothing else is in line with this blade. So a uh, couple of safety tips. Now, I'm not saying the way I do stuff is the safest way to do it by any means. Go ahead, put your safety guards on, buy lots of bubble wrap and wrap yourself up and get helmets. But um, it just don't, uh, I'll give you some safety tips to keep this stuff from kicking back. So what I'm doing back here is I'm lifting and pulling out and it keeps it securely. And again, not much, I, I'm exaggerating there too. I just, just a little bit uh, to put some pressure down onto the table and a little bit into the fence. And then once it's in about this far, then you can just ease up on that and just hold it down with your fingers. Now the first, the first uh, uh, cut we're gonna make is a 24 degree, almost along this here line right there, but it's gonna come up to this corner right here. And, uh, of course, on this one, we're measuring to the top corner, or that we're cutting from here. We're cutting about an eighth of an inch off, probably, up to this, to meet this corner here. Um, on the, this is the bottom piece that runs the full length, uncut, on top of the rib. It lays on top of the rib and runs the whole length uh, of the aileron spar, spar web. This is the spar cap. And then the top one, oh, I'll show you that in a second. And that's 24 degrees. And the way I'll get get this get this measurement is I'll bump it in till my eyeball just till it looks like it's about there. And then I'll just run it into the blade a little bit and, and see where it comes out on this top edge here. So lock, don't forget to lock your fence down. And again, I'm pulling pulling up and pulling over on this to keep it in against the fence and the table. Obviously not even close. That 
That's right there. Now the next one we're going to do, we're actually going to, it's going to be about 40 degrees angle and it's actually going to leave an eighth of an inch on this bottom side here, on the side against the fence and on the bottom there. That's going to be about an eighth of an inch. That's going to be harder, harder to do. Well, slightly harder, you know, everything's, I might have to put my other, uh, my other insert in with the thinner well, no, with the angle I'm doing, I can't put my other insert in. So, yep, I'll just have to be real careful. Now, before I went very far, I went ahead and went inside and dry fit this on my aileron uh, spar web and made sure that it, it was going to uh, have the right angle and everything else, and it, it, it's perfect. So, we're going to keep on going and running this is kind of a hairy setup basically i don't have any any it's basically coming straight off the table here and it's such a light piece it's not wanting to you know do anything i hold it mostly against the fence and then it rests on this this uh riving blade right there on the way out that's how i'm doing it ain't the safest way i wouldn't recommend doing it don't do it this way i'll say and uh and uh just keep your hands and everything away from the blade seems like any time you're working on spars it's like it's work that you gotta do quickly and try to beat the pot time and get it all done at once we're gonna need a lot of clamps on this we're gonna clamp it a couple different ways first we're gonna clamp it clamp we're gonna start I'm gonna start on the bottom spar cap and of course we've got to clamp the spar cap against this but then we also have to keep it pushed against the uh, inch and five-eighths spacer that that there clamp is holding against the rib. It's an inch and five-eighths spacer that goes between the uh, rear spar, bottom of the rear spar, and the bottom of this here aileron spar, spar web. And we'll just call it the spar, not spar web. It'll be a spar as soon as we get the caps on it. But anyways, uh, so we need to hold it in. And we'll do that just simply by clamping Set, putting a clamp over it, uh, holding it against it. And that's We're just going to push it in and push the clamp in against it, and that's all we're going to do. Of course, we're going to put glue between the joints, the butt, jo the butt joints, and uh, the whole way down. And then we're going to, uh, when we get to the top ones, we're going to have to, cut these so that they fit snugly between each rib you don't want them any gap that's that's a part of the glue joint so first thing is to get all the all the clamps spread out along there and uh, and then maybe I'll cut the top ones ahead of time and pre fit them dry fit them See, the bottom one just lays across the top of the ribs. You just slide it in there, clamp it down, and uh, put a clamp on the rib to keep it against the inch and five-eighths. That's fairly easy. But these ones have to be fitted between each rib. So maybe I'll get them all fitted first, lay them up there, and then we can just run right through the whole thing. So I got all these top spar caps fitted almost perfectly. Well, I mean they're all snug, so I guess that's about perfect. Now I got to get them oriented right and set them up on top 
we're going to start with the bottom. And as we uh, as we assemble it, we're going to have to hold everything together, have it pulled back, have it squared up, have these butt joints glued. And of course, the strength in these butt joints is going to come partly from the rib caps and partly from being capped, uh, covered with a one inch wide strip. And uh, if we don't get that done right away, we'll have to sand off any glue that's in this area and then, and then cap it. So I guess we're just about ready to start gluing now. And I'll fast forward that. Okay, everything's dry fitted, um, whether or not, I don't know if you could see in my fast forward, but um, this here angle isn't perfect to, in other words, it, it wanted to rock backwards to sit flat on the uh, lower rib cap here. So whenever I scuffed this, I just scuffed it on one side to get uh, to steepen that angle up a little bit. And now it sits on there pretty pretty flat all the way across. So everything's dry fitted and ready to start gluing and clamping. And, uh, and what I said about clamping over, you're clamping this also to the rib. So that's where we're gonna push in, hold, hold the uh, spar web up all the way and and then push it in against the one and five eighths spacer that's behind it. And then of course it should just automatically go in against the one eighth because of this angle in that. So we should be all good as far as clamping it up. And then first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-glue the, uh, the butt joints right here. And then once we get there, you know, we'll, we don't have to worry about moving it around to get them in. So we'll glue the butt joints and then we're going to glue right here too, right at the, uh, right where it comes into the corner. So we'll glue that up real good first. We'll get all the butt joints first, and then, uh, and glue the end. And then we're going to, I'll cut a piece, probably just this here. That probably doesn't need to be here. Yeah, this here one's good. This here piece there is good enough. So this here will be one of my corner pieces that I use in here. Either that or I'll, I'll just cut a piece of this here spar cap right there and use it for a corner piece right there. And I've had to use a uh, paintbrush to uh, knock all the dust off this. I guess it's a humidity, humidity in the air. It's uh, just a little bit hard to uh, get the dust, all the sanding dust off the, off the uh, glue joints. Now these here closed pins, they're not very strong, but if you put enough on, you can see it squeezing glue out. And also, this is one of those places 
where you, you got to kind of work quick. So instead of taking all that time to spread the glue across the uh, web, I just put it on kind of heavy on the uh, spar cap and, uh, and, and moved it around a little bit. And then, of course, I made sure it was all shoved back against the, uh, the root end of it. And then this was butted up and then made sure it's all shoved up tight in here and back against this and then pull this down on the ribs bottom rib and push it in and and then clamp it all so that I can see that the glue is squeezing out of it and uh, yeah Yeah, one thing I didn't mention is, because I forgot, is that you're going to have to put a upright, clamp it on the bottom, a vertical, uh, halfway between here, because you do need to clamp this at least here, in three places along there. And you can't just clamp it to the web itself because there's not enough space there. Now, when I had, when I had the uh, wooden Clothes pins. I just took and shaved them down thin enough that they'd reach right down in there and, and get gripped at. But I don't have them, so now we're going to have to put another one and clamp all the way across <clears throat> the spar. Clamp it against there. Not very tightly though, because it will bend it, you know, it will bow it if you go too tight. Well, my wife heard me and reminded me that we did buy some clothes pins. So, we're going to go ahead and shave some back, see if I can get them thin enough to uh, go on that back side of the, yep, so you can see what I'm doing, I'm cutting one thin all the way back. And that one is, yep, that's good. Thought I was going to crack the back side of it off. Oh, come on. Try it again. So just make one side thin, like that. And then the other side, right there, we don't want to take make both of them too thin, otherwise we lose a lot of our clamping pressure. So I'm just cutting it, cutting a step back like this, so it can reach over the reach over the front. Like that. That's it. Okay, we're at a point where we can stop if we want. We I just ran out of the glue pot that I'd mixed. So, but before you walk away, make sure that everything is secure and aligned. Like we made these butt joints, so you can't just ignore the butt joints. So, I put a clamp up here just to make sure that's even. And then further out, I just put these clamps on the bottom just to hold this here piece up into place. Then you got this short little piece on the back. Well, we glued up that butt joint there too. So, had to push it up into place, up into position, and then make sure that was clamped in place. Now we can go take care of birthday stuff for the day. Lots of grandkids, lots of birthdays. <laughs>